Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to replace your drive clutch on your Polaris ATV. If your CVT isn't working right, then you definitely wanna get in there and find out what's going on with it. Now, we do have a detailed video that shows the common inspections to make to your clutches. We also have videos that show you how to rebuild both of those if that's what you need to do. But in some cases, it might be more cost effective and more convenient to replace the entire drive clutch. So if that's the case with you, you can get an aftermarket or an OEM part. Now, an example of when it would be more cost effective is if the sheaves on your drive clutch are completely worn out, they have deep grooves in them, then chances are the rest of the parts of the clutch are gonna be worn out as well. So in this video, that's what we're gonna focus on, just replacing that primary clutch. And this is gonna work for you also if you're just taking that primary clutch off your machine and you need to rebuild it and then get it back installed. So we're gonna show you how to do it on a 2006 Polaris Sportsman 500, but the process will be similar for most Polaris ATVs. So let's go ahead and get started. To do this job, we're gonna use some common hand tools, including a variety of different sizes of sockets. We have Torx bits, Allen keys, and then to help in a later step, we're gonna use a Sharpie, screwdrivers. We also have Scotch-Brite, a digital caliper, a clutch puller. You can't do this job without it. You also need a clutch holding tool. We also have a clutch press to help make everything easier. And then rags, safety glasses and rubber gloves. Now, as far as parts go, you can get an OEM replacement or an aftermarket. The OEM may or may not come with the spring and weights. It'll tell you under the diagram. So a lot of times you're gonna have to get these additional parts with it. Now the aftermarkets, a lot of times these are gonna come with the weights and spring already installed like this one. And anytime you're replacing these drive clutches, you'll wanna replace your belt as well. We're also using contact cleaner and some waterproof grease. The first thing we need to do is gain access to our clutch. So to do that, we're gonna remove our footrest cover and we've already gone ahead and raised our machine off the ground. You do not have to do this, but we've just done it to better show the process. Now that we have some of the fasteners out of the foot tray, we're also gonna remove our seat and the side panel. Now the service manual will want you to remove the rear rack and rear fender, but we're gonna simplify the process. We're only gonna remove the necessary fasteners to lift the rear fender up a little bit, and that'll give us access to our clutch cover. Now once you've done that, you can go ahead and remove your footrest cover. So with the footrest out of the way, I'm gonna lift up on the fender. You can see these hose clamps. This is your breather tube going down to the clutch cover. You wanna loosen one of these up really loose. Then we'll go ahead, slide that out of the way. At this point, we need to remove all of the bolts holding the clutch cover in place. So I'm gonna use our Tusk clutch cover removal tool to do that. And you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to any bolts that have brackets like this attached to them. Make sure they get back in place when you go, go back together with it. Once all of the cover bolts are removed, you can now remove the cover and just keep in mind, you wanna disconnect this from that hose as well as lift up on the rear fender to gain enough clearance to remove the cover. Now to remove the belt, it's gonna be different for every machine, so you wanna to refer to your model specific service manual. Some of them use a tool to spread the sheaves, ours does not. This model, we pull up on the belt and then walk it off.
Now most of the time you're gonna have a little bit of dust buildup that's came down into this clutch cover. So once you have the belt off, it's a good idea to blow some of that dust off these clutches. And I definitely recommend wearing a mask while you do this. Next, we need to take this bolt out of our drive clutch. So to hold this in place while I loosen everything up, I'm actually gonna use a clutch holding tool. This one's from SLP. And then this just hooks right onto the clutch on this outer portion. Then we're gonna loosen this up using a socket and ratchet. All right, now to get the primary clutch off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our clutch puller, apply some grease to these threads, and then we'll tighten this down and hold the clutch still with the clutch holding tool, and it's gonna pop the clutch off. So this clutch is actually coming off quiet. Sometimes you'll hear a popping sound when these break free. So if that happens, it's totally normal. Don't worry about it. So once the clutch is broken free, we'll go ahead and take this over to the bench. All right, now with the clutch on the bench, I just want to cover a couple of common reasons why you'd be replacing the complete clutch. For more details, again, you want to refer to our video on how to inspect these clutches. But if these towers are really worn down, if you saw that video and you notice they're worn down, or if you have some deep grooves in these sheaves, then chances are it's gonna be cheaper just to replace this whole thing. And another thing that can happen is wear to this sheave shaft. So be paying attention to those kind of things. Now the next steps will depend on which clutch you got for a replacement. So if you got the OEM clutch, you're probably gonna to have to take a couple of extra steps. You're gonna be either reusing the old weights and the spring if they're in good condition, or I recommend just replacing the spring and weights with new parts. So at this point, we're gonna pull this drive clutch cover off. Now for our machine, we're actually gonna be using this aftermarket clutch, but if you're gonna use an OEM replacement, then one thing you wanna do, especially on this cover, is index it to the tower or index the cover to the tower. So we'll show you how to do it on this old clutch. We're just gonna make an X on both of these. And then at this point, we're gonna loosen all of these bolts. We're just gonna go about a quarter of a turn. And then we actually have a special tool to help remove this cover. So right here, we have the SLP clutch press tool. So I'm just gonna set the drive clutch on there. And this spring, for this drive clutch, you don't have to have this tool, the spring doesn't have a ton of pressure on it. For the driven clutch, you really need one of these. But if you have one of these, this is just gonna make the job easier and a little bit safer. So I'm just gonna compress that spring a little bit and then I can remove these bolts the rest of the way. If you're not using this tool, just back these bolts off evenly and go kind of in a crisscross pattern as best as you can. Now this last one, if for some reason you're gonna be reusing this clutch, then you definitely would wanna keep a hand on this upper sheave, and that way it just doesn't drop when you remove this bolt. So once you've done that, you can remove the spring pressure We'll remove our cover and the spring. If you wanna know if you can reuse the spring or not, the manual should give you a spec for the free length of it. Before we remove the weight, I just wanna point out a couple of common inspections. So if you have a lot of side-to-side -side play in it, or if you have any flat spots across the top of that weight where it rides against the roller, then you definitely wanna get them replaced. But if it looks okay, then you can go ahead and reuse it. So at this point, we're just gonna remove this bolt going all the way through. If the spring and the weights check out okay, 
then at this point you're going to install them onto your new clutch. Now keep in mind as this goes back together you want to torque all the fasteners to spec and make sure that this cover is indexed with the tower get it back in the same orientation that it came off. And then if you're not using this clutch compression tool, then make sure once you get a couple of bolts start, started, make sure you tighten all of these down evenly in a few different steps to keep everything centered. Now real quick, before we move on, I do wanna talk about this driven clutch. So when you go back together with everything, you definitely wanna make sure that these clutch sheaves are perfectly clean and they're not glazed. And if they are glazed, you can actually use a little bit of Scotch-Brite to rough up the surface, but if you do that, make sure you clean it out really well. You can use a little compressed air in there to blow them out, as well as a little bit of contact cleaner on a rag. You can wipe these out. Um, now, if you did have issues with your driven clutch and you need to rebuild it, again, we do have a good video to help you through that process. So if you need to remove this clutch, all you have to do is remove this center bolt So as you can see, there's not a lot of torque that's actually on that bolt. The torque spec on this one is 17 foot-pounds. Again, this is going to vary from machine to machine. So make sure you're using the correct spec for your machine. So at this point, the driven clutch should just slide right off. If it doesn't slide right off, chances are that you have a ton of corrosion on these splines. Now, the only other thing you need to know about this process is as you go back together, make sure these splines are cleaned up and apply some grease to them so the clutch doesn't seize to the shaft. Now, even though we're putting a little bit of grease on here, you don't want to put a lot because if you put too much on there, you're going to have grease flying everywhere and you don't want any grease on your new belt. So now we can slide this back in place. You might have to rock it back and forth just a little bit to get the splines to line up on that shaft. Once everything's lined up, press it all the way on, and we're gonna torque our bolt to 17 foot-pounds. Now before we install the drive clutch, we're going to clean this tapered portion of the shaft. All right, now even though this is a brand new clutch, you want to verify that all these bolts are torqued down correctly. And since it is new, it's probably going to have a thin film of oil on these sheaves. So you definitely want to clean these off as well as this shaft the sheave shaft down in the center, and then you also have this tapered portion on the back side. Clean that out as well. So now we'll go ahead and install our drive clutch, and I'm gonna torque the bolt down to 40 foot-pounds. Now to install the belt, you wanna make sure that the markings are easily read from this side of the machine. To install the belt on this machine, what we're gonna do is install it onto the drive clutch first, and then we're gonna work it onto the driven clutch. So on the driven clutch, we'll start at the bottom and work the belt in between the sheaves. We're gonna rotate the movable sheave on the back side clockwise as we push up on the belt, and that's gonna help separate the sheaves to install the belt all the way on. All right, now that the belt is popped into place, you want to spin the driven clutch several times until the belt rides all the way up in the sheaves. If you don't do this, it's kind of like starting in high gear and you do have a chance that you'll burn the belt. Next, we'll clean out the clutch cover. We'll reinstall it and make sure as you install the mounting bolts, if there are any brackets these bolts were going through, make sure those get put back into place and make sure you line up the rubber boot for the vent tube and tighten down the hose clamp. Next, we can install our footrest cover. Reinstall any bolts that you removed from your rear fender and your rear rack. Then you can install your side panel and the seat. And that's all there is to replacing the primary clutch on your Polaris ATV. Now, keep in mind, it's a good idea. Once you've ran this clutch for a little bit, you wanna go back in there, double check the torques on both of the clutch 
mounting bolts. Once you've done that, you're good to go. Now, if you need any parts for either your clutch or anything on your ATV, be sure to check out our website. We have options for OEM and aftermarket parts. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.